friends, my friends, my friends, welcome back to another episode of The Daily Dose. Thank you all for being here. Appreciate your time. We are coming at you again today with some more from the book of Job. So today we're picking back up in Job. We're going through chapters 16, or from chapter 16, excuse me, from chapter 16 through chapter 19. We've also got a psalm slid in there today, Psalm 139. So uh, again, we're picking up in Job, where Job and his buddies are kind of having a, a, a ongoing conversation back and forth. And today we open up with Job, uh, Job responding to the last of his friends that was speaking to him. So Job says, or it says, excuse me, then Job replied, I have heard many things like these. You are miserable comforters, all of you. Wow. So Job is like, look, I've heard this before. I've heard people say this kind of stuff to me before. Like there must be some kind of hidden sin in your life. You need to get your stuff together. You're in denial about something. There's a reason for this. You need to examine your heart, blah, 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 right? That's kind of what they've been saying. <clears throat> and Job is saying, I've heard stuff like this before, y'all. This ain't nothing new. I've heard this before. And by the way, you guys are miserable comforters. You stink at this, right? Will your long-winded speeches never end? Amen. Sometimes when we're hurting, we don't want long-winded speeches. We want somebody to look at us and listen and put their arm around us and, and smile and encourage us, or maybe even not smile, maybe even cry with us if we're crying, right? Oftentimes, that's what we want when we're hurting. We want someone to listen. And beloved, I encourage you to be the person to listen. If you come across somebody today throughout your day, whether it is a customer at work or a coworker or a friend or whoever, when you come across somebody who is struggling and having a hard time or you think they're having a hard time, sincerely ask them about it and listen. 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 Let me say that again. Listen to what they have to say. Okay, please do not do this, right? Have you ever been telling a story to someone, getting something off your chest, and you're a couple sentences into your story, and there's somebody else in the room who monopolizes the conversation, right? And they say, oh yeah, you're having trouble with that? Well, let me tell you about something that happened to me. And then they almost start bragging about how they've been through something like you, but they've been through it much worse. And then they make the conversation all about them. And I'm not talking about when, when somebody says, hey, I can relate to you. I've been through something similar. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the people that like to be in the limelight. And they will, whether they realize they're doing it or not, they will intentionally interrupt you in the midst of your story <clears throat> they will turn the spotlight on them. They will tell a story that's bigger and cooler than yours. And now they've monopolized the spotlight. It's no longer about you. And that's extremely rude. Extremely rude. Beloved, please don't be that guy or that girl. Don't be the person that interrupts the conversation, hijacks it, makes it about you, and tries to one-up everybody. Don't do that. That's bad. So, anyways, continuing on. Um, Job is saying, will your long-winded speeches never end? What ails you that you keep on arguing? So Job is like, dude, y'all have been saying the same thing 10 different ways over and over again. I'm over it, okay? I'm done. I'm over it. I'm over it. <clears throat> I also could speak to you, or excuse me, I also could speak like you if it were my place. I could make fine speeches against you and shake my head at you, but my mouth would encourage you. Comfort from my lips would bring you relief. So Job is saying, look, y'all are trying to come down on me, right? You're coming at me with all this negative energy. You're speaking death to me in a sense, right? You're speaking down to me. But if the tables were turned, I'd be encouraging you. I wouldn't be speaking down to you. I would be giving you encouragement, right? I would bring comfort from my lips to bring you relief. So then Job goes on to give you know, another speech, he kind of continues on, and then we end up coming back over to Bildad, right? And here's a few things that Bildad has to say. Chapter 18, then Bildad the Shuhite replied, when will you end these speeches? Be sensible, and then we can talk. So both of them are saying kind of the same thing. They're like, Job said, are y'all speeches never going to end? <clears throat> and then Job goes on to give a speech. And then Bildad is like, Job, are your speeches never going to end? And then he goes on to kind of give a speech, right? So it's kind of comical. Um, but, but Bildad is basically saying, when are you going to end these speeches? Be sensible. You're not making sense. You're not being logical. Think about it. 
right? That's kind of where Bildad is going. <clears throat> he says, why are we regarded as cattle and considered stupid in your sight, right? <clears throat> Again, Bildad is like, why aren't you listening to us? We're not stupid. We're, we're, we're not dummies. We're not uneducated. We know what we're talking about. You need to listen to us, you know? You who tear yourself to pieces in your anger, is the earth to be abandoned for your sake? Or must the rocks be moved from their place, right? And then build out again. He continues, goes on and gives his little speech. So then we go back to Job, chapter 19. Job replies, how long will you torment me and crush me with your words? Isn't it amazing how much damage we can do with our words? Lives can be destroyed, marriages can be ruined, jobs can be lost, friendships can be thrown out the window. All over words all over things that are said, all over things that come out of our mouth. A children's hopes and dreams can be destroyed, all because of the way that a parent talks to that child. Amen? This mouth can give life and it can give death in a very real way. We need to be extremely careful and choose our words very carefully because so much harm can be done with what comes out of our mouth. And it's what's in our heart that ultimately flows out of our mouth. Amen? <clears throat> so anyways, again, it says, How long will you torment me and crush me with your words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. If it's true that I have gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. So look, Job is saying, here's the deal. Y'all keep talking smack. You keep pointing the finger at me. Look, I'm not the one that was in the wrong. I'm not being punished because of my sin. But even if I was, that's on me. Y'all need to chill out. Stay in your lane, right? Stay in your lane. If indeed you would exalt yourselves above me and use my humiliation against me, then know that God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Have pity on me, my friends. Have pity, for the land of God has struck me. Why do you pursue me as God does? Will you never get enough of my flesh? So Job, is he's kind of reaching a breaking point. I think he has been at a breaking point, just barely hanging on by a thread, it seems, with all the suffering that he's been enduring. But that's all I got for y'all. I appreciate y'all sticking around. Um, I, I've really been enjoying going through the book of Job because there is so much stuff in here that applies to us, stuff that's practical on, on, um, on a horizontal level. In other words, it, it's practical in regards to how we live our life with one another and how we interact with one another and how we communicate with one another, but it's also practical in a vertical way, right? It's, it's speaking of, of God and his relationship to man and man and their relationship to God and the need for a mediator between the two, which is what Jesus was and is. Amen. So thanks for being here. Appreciate your time. And until we meet again, big old deuces.